Hallelujah. I'm so glad that that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he got up out of the grave. All power in his hand. That's love. That's love. That's love. I want to thank the Berean Praise team for preparing our hearts with that message in song as we have our discussion tonight. We, we're changing our format just tied. We, we don't want to be redundant. So some Wednesdays we have preaching, powerful preaching. Some Wednesdays we just pray. Uh, and then some Wednesdays we have a discussion and, and last Wednesday we started with a discussion and this is not a panel discussion, it's a everybody discussion. So I'm gonna ask you to unmute the devices, get your Bibles, excuse me, as we look in the word tonight to find uh, some strength, hope, courage, power to continue on this walk as we anticipate the soon coming of our Lord. Last Wednesday, our topic was 
embracing the principal thing. It came out of uh, Proverbs chapter four and verse seven. And uh, we uh, talked about that principal thing being wisdom. The text, Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Don't just stop at wisdom because wisdom has a partner. It says, in, but in all of your getting, get understanding. And we, we kind of delve into that last week and it was a blessing. And I'm glad that you're back tonight. Tonight, we want to talk about the kingdom-focused life. The kingdom-focused life. And, and we, 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 we want to build this discussion upon uh, Matthew's gospel, the sixth chapter and the 33rd verse, Matthew chapter six and verse 33, when you have your Bible, turn to that. Matthew 6, 33 reads, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. It is a contract, if you will. It is uh, a covenant, Yahweh, through the word Yeshua, this, this word, this covenant promise is coming from Yeshua himself. It is a command to us. And there are two uh, key words that make up the contractual and the beneficial uh, phrases of this, this, this command, this imperative, this contract. And that's what I want us to kind of discuss tonight. The, the first is kingdom, kingdom. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then the second is righteousness, but not just any righteousness. The text says his, righteousness, then you have the consequence or the benefit, the, the, the result of seeking first Yahweh's kingdom and Yahweh's righteousness. He says, and all these things shall be added unto you. So let's, let's dig into that, that, that word kingdom. How, how do you understand the kingdom? What, what does the kingdom mean to you? Anybody, let's talk about the kingdom tonight. We're, we're, we're dealing with a kingdom focused life, the kingdom. Okay, you gotta, you gotta yeah. unmute your device now. So we are? Yes. When I think of the kingdom, I think of the kingdom of God, his heavenly kingdom, but also that um, he is our soon coming king and we are royal priesthood. So therefore we are part of the kingdom and that we're building a kingdom. We seek first the kingdom, so to speak in the first, uh, through communicating with our God, our king, our Lord the person that we serve and we hold our allegiance to. I think of the kingdom, not in castles or knights and things of that nature, but I think of the kingdom as a, a place where God dwells. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we go. Yes, when sir. I, when, when, when I think of the kingdom, I think of, uh, like, like Sister Paula said, we don't want to just narrow it to tangible thing, but I think about the, the essence of God, okay. Uh, uh, everything that He stands for, uh, everything He represents, mm. uh, it be purposeful uh, mm. in 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 searching for God mm. in all 
do and all that we see. Mm. Uh, I think about the, like I said, I go back to seeking the essence of God, what, what he mm. is, what he represents. Mm. Okay. The essence of God. We're not talking about castles and knights and all of the things that people think about when they say kingdom. Sister Adam said, and you were saying, yeah, the 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 essence of God. Flesh that out a little bit, Elder uh, Proche. When you when you say the essence of God, what 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 are you saying? What I'm, what I'm saying is, uh, I, I hate to move on to the second word because uh, that's where I was kind of go his his essence or what he represents. Okay. Yeah. What what he's all about. Okay. Uh, what he stands for. Mm -hmm. uh, seek what 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 he has if we seek for his kingdom what mm -hmm. he has is available to us if mm -hmm. we just if we be purposeful and look for it mm -hmm. okay anybody else who's who's on with us who want to chime in on this talking about the kingdom what 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 how do you define the kingdom when you think about the kingdom of Yahweh, Yeshua says, seek first the kingdom. How do you define the kingdom? Okay, I know we don't just have two people on tonight. And, and if we do, if everybody else is online, you can, you can write something in the chat so we know what you're thinking. When you when you think about the kingdom, those of you online, drop something in the chat for me. What comes to your mind when you think about the kingdom of God? Because the text is clear. Yeshua is not uh, ambiguous. He's, he's not vague. He's very clear. Seek ye first the kingdom. He didn't just leave it at the kingdom. He said the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So, so what, what do you, my friend, understand as the kingdom of God? It can be one word, it can be three words, it can be a whole sentence. But if you if you are on Facebook with us tonight, join us in this discussion. Let's let's bring some practicality to our spirituality. What do you what do you think of when you hear Yeshua say, "You should seek the kingdom of God first"? Okay. Well, let's go to his righteousness. Before before we do that, let me let me kind of give us a little more basic foundation so we, we have the full context of, of what is going on. Uh, can somebody find Matthew chapter six? And, and let's start with verse number 24. And, and, and let's read from verse 24 to verse 32. And that will give us the context from which uh, Yeshua is, is making this contract with humanity because you know he's God now. So he's not just speaking as a man. He's also speaking as God. And, and this is a contract. Seek first and then this is going to happen. So, so let's see the context. Who's got Matthew chapter 6 beginning with verse 24? I have it, Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Read it for us. No man can serve two masters, for mm. either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Yea, ye cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25, therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What shall ye put on? 
Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Verse 26, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into born. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much more than they? Verse 27, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit into his stature? Verse 28, and why take ye thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Verse 29, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, there, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. 31, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewither shall we be clothed? Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. In verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you, Sister Adam. So, so, so what we're yeah. seeing here is the contrasting of two kingdoms. One, the kingdom of God, and the other, the kingdom of man, or the earthly kingdom, the worldly kingdom, the kingdom where the Gentiles or the people that are not of God, the, 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 the tribes, the, the Greek word is ethnos. That's from where we get our English word ethnicity, the ethnos, the, the tribes. They seek after that. So, so, so watch this. Yeshua is giving us a comparison of one kingdom. That kingdom is a kingdom that seek after clothes, money, food, houses, positions on earth, those things. And then there's another kingdom which is the kingdom of Yahweh, uh, the kingdom of God. And he says, don't let the kingdom of the world be your pursuit, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the things that the people of the world are pursuing will pursue you. Notice he didn't say, and you will get. He said, it will be added. That's, 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 a, that's a pursuing word. So he flips the script. If you do not pursue riches and money and fame and, and, and the best clothes and the blink blink and all of this stuff that the world chase after that causes them to, you know, run over each other and stab each other in the back and kill each other and, and, and malign each other, all this stuff. Because they're doing it to get these things. But he says, if you seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, then these things that they're chasing after will chase after you. So, so now that we have the proper context, let's, let's, let's talk about what, what is his righteousness then? What is this partner to the kingdom of Yahweh that he's asking us to seek his righteousness? We seek the kingdom and then we seek Yahweh's righteousness. And if we have those two, the things that the Gentiles are chasing after will chase after us. I like that. I, I, I'm just excited to hear what, what a covenant promise it is. So, so let's talk about his righteousness 
in context with his kingdom, in context with this seeking and, 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 and contrast it with what the Gentiles, what the people that are not of the kingdom of Yahweh, the kingdom of God are looking for. Is anybody out there? I know, I know you're not supposed to define a word with a word, but I'll define uh, my, my explanation of that righteousness is, uh, and his righteousness, God's righteousness is living like God would have to live. Okay. You, you, okay, you, I don't know, you went mute or I'm, uh, something's yeah. wrong with my, okay, now I hear you again. Okay, you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. Okay, so you want me to repeat my answer again? Yes. Okay, now I said, uh, uh, I would, I would think God's righteousness would be uh, uh, living like God would have us to live that reflects his character. Okay, so so how will God, and, and I'm not putting you on the spot, I'm talking to all of us, because sometimes we, we speak in these religious languages or uh, jargon that people don't really understand. So somebody said, well, the way God wants us to live. So how, how give me some practical ways that God will have us to live that, that is his righteousness. According to his Ten Commandments. Okay, his Ten Commandments. Okay. Elder, can let's, I let's, take that on you? Yeah, go, yeah, that, go ahead. Go ahead. That's exactly what I always was taught in Sabbath school, with that God's righteousness is actually his law. First, how we treat him, then how we treat others. So he would his righteousness is right living. He would not want us or he would want us instead of seeking to make money per se for our own gain and, and our uh, admonition and people praising us, he would want us to give it actually by honoring our parents and being kind by not stealing and lying and committing adultery, not, not Covington to what somebody has, but uh, being grateful that God has blessed them with it just as well as you. But it's, it's more important though that first ministry of righteousness is to treat someone else rightly or to treat them the way God would want us to treat them. His examples are, Moses, I want you to make a way for my children to get across this red sea. I, I need to use you to show them that show the Egyptians the way they treat it. That's not the way to treat my children. The way to treat them is I'm a God that rescues. I'm a God that saves. I'm a God that makes a way in the wilderness. I treat y'all right, so turn around and treat me right by worshiping me and giving me honor only. Well, it was a okay. long end. That's what I meant. Okay, so so we're talking self -like, selfless living, selfless. Let's let's go to Matthew five and verse twenty. Somebody find Matthew five twenty, and let's see what what the the Yeshua makes a comparison of two types of righteousness in Matthew 5, 20. Okay, pastor, it reads, for I say unto thee that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Did you hear that? So, so, so there is a righteousness that is not godly righteousness because it's self-aggrandizing righteousness, self-exalting. If you, if you move back to uh, 19 and 18 and 17 and 16 of, of, of Matthew 5, well, not 16, but uh, 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 18 and 19, you will, you will find out what Yeshua is, is trying to compare this, this righteousness uh, to that the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, their righteousness was self-serving righteousness. They wanted to stand 
on the street corner and everybody see them praying these long prayers. They wanted to dress in a certain way. They wanted to walk a certain way. When they're fasting, everybody know that they're fasting. You know, uh, so, 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 so here's the thing. I've always said, doing the right thing is not necessarily doing the righteous thing. Doing the right thing for the right reason is doing the righteous thing, which is being selfless, being selfless, okay? What, what, what is it that the scribes and the Pharisees did that Yeshua would say, unless your righteousness goes beyond the, the motive of your righteousness, the, 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 the reason why you are doing this right thing, you know, because we can do the right thing and not do the righteous thing. And see, sometimes we focus too much on doing the right thing, which is not the righteous thing. If you, if you go to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 12, uh, Yeshua and, and the Pharisees are having a problem. They, they're complaining because uh, his disciples uh, they're breaking corn and eating it on the Sabbath. Well, the law said, you know, you shouldn't do any work on the Sabbath. That's the right thing. But if the reason you are doing it is not righteous, is not for God's glory, for God's praise, for God's honor, then you are just doing the right thing. You're not doing the righteous thing. And, and this is what Yeshua was trying to share uh, here with his disciples. He, he, he wants us to do the righteous thing. And whenever you are doing the righteous thing, self dies. Self dies. What, 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 what does John say in chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17? God so loved the world that he what? Give his only begotten son. That, that's the righteous thing. He, God is giving everything. Philippians uh, says, Adams, can you find... Philippians 2 and verse 5 and 6. Philippians 2, 5 and 6. And let's let's see, let's see the righteous thing there. And and, and uh, elder, if you can find uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 30. Let's, let's talk about the kingdom and this righteousness, you know, together. Yeah. You said Philippians chapter two, verses five and six, six, pastor. Yes. Okay. And it reads, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse six, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Okay. Is it, was there verse six? Yes. Okay, read seven and eight. Let's let's verse, let's read the whole yeah. Verse seven. Let's do what he did. Yeah, he thought it not Robert to be equal with God, but what else did he do? Verse seven and eight. Verse seven, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Mm. Was made in the likeness of men. Verse mm. eight. Mm. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
Mm. Even the death, the death of, of the cross. Did, did you did you hear that? Uh, we're talking about the righteousness of God. It so, is God. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to say, so pastor, in the end, I feel like for me as a, a woman, I'm just, just simply speaking for myself, ego mm. loses. The ego loses when I try to, when I have God as my righteous. I'm following his, my ego will lose every time. I mm. won't come up with the, oh yeah, do y'all see how Sister Paula handled that? Yeah, she took control. She took charge. Yeah. And I'm waiting for it to be validated by someone. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for my applause and my accolade instead. Um, I, I'm, I'm willingly wanting to be obedient to God, even if, that, if it does, you do too much. You need to stop. You need to slow down. You be doing everything for the church. You need to, that's just too much. Girl, you need to have a life. My ego loses. My mm. ego loses when I want to, to, to seek and follow after Christ. I want to be the type of person that's used as a servant mm. and not always being served. Amen. Saying. Amen. And, and, and not doing it for the benefits that it brings. Whether that benefit is being famous, you know, stardom, uh, being in the limelight, and all of that, you know, because then you are losing the righteousness. That's why uh, in Matthew 25, and we're not going to read all of these texts, but you remember Yeshua say, some will come to him and say, did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not heal sick people in your name? Did we not feed hungry people? That's the right thing. Those people did all of the right things, but they didn't do the righteous thing. It wasn't the righteousness of God. Uh, Elder, you, you got Luke chapter 11, 20? Okay, did we lose Elder? Um, hey, I got it fast. I thought you said 1130, but you want 1120? 1120, yeah, it sounds like a time. 1120. It says, uh, but if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God will come upon you. Okay, so, so you see what Yeshua is saying? The kingdom is not necessarily and entirely what we are looking forward to. What's the word? Eschatologically. Yes, that's the word. Thank you. The, the, the kingdom is not necessarily what we're looking forward to eschatologically when Yeshua comes back to take us to heaven. We're looking forward to that. Paul says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. So we are anticipating and, and longing for that. But Yeshua is saying, if I, with the finger of God, has cast out your demons, your problems, your issues on this earth, the kingdom of God is already come to you. So, so, so he wasn't casting out his demons. He wasn't healing his sickness. He wasn't uh, feeding his hunger. What was he doing? He was feeding their hunger. He was casting out their demons. He was healing their illnesses. And he says, the kingdom is come to you. But he was not doing it for any glory. Philippians 2 just told us he thought it not robbery. He didn't think he was losing anything or anybody was cheating him of anything or you know he was he was you know he was he was he was being denied his position but he willingly took off 
his divinity and clothe himself in humanity and came on this earth so that the kingdom of God can be here with us so that we can walk in the kingdom. And as we are walking in the kingdom, we exude his righteousness. So when we do the right thing, we don't just stop at doing it as the right thing, but we do it because it is the righteous thing to do. The righteous thing. Anybody else wants to add anything before we, we, we tie it up and, and break it to a close? Seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, and, and all of this is the Sermon on the Mount. And you're right, Elder, Elder Proche, you're talking about the assignment that we talked about yesterday in our Bible study, uh, starting with Matthew chapter five, and, and it follows through chapter six and chapter seven. All of this is, it's encompasses what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. And when you go to five, starting with verse three, you see those nine blessings, uh, those nine uh, uh, essentials and, and benefits of those. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are uh, you when men shall uh, speak ill against you for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding. It's all about selflessness, giving, exuding, uh, showing the kingdom in our lives so other people can see it and say, you know what? I want to be like that person because that person is like God. Anybody else? Last words before we close. Okay. Well, I thank you for uh, chiming in. I thank you for sharing in this discussion tonight. And I pray that as we leave tonight, we will leave with the desire to live a kingdom-focused life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be unto you. Yahweh, we bless you and thank you again for allowing us to spend some time in your word and just deal with some of these practical things that we need uh, in our lives to live the righteous life that is your life, the selfless life that is your life. Bless us, we pray in Yeshua's name, amen. Well, my friends, uh, tonight, if you have been blessed with this experience um, and we know you want to partner with us uh, to grow the kingdom here, selflessness giving to the work of the kingdom, you see on the screen how you can be a blessing to us. And I want to thank Many of you who, when we make these appeals, you, you give to bless this ministry. Yahweh bless you and keep you and, and strengthen you and provide for you and secure you because you have been a blessing to us. But we would never stop asking because the ministry never ends. So you see on the screen tonight, you can go to our website, 
www.bereanbatonrouge.com. Click on the online giving and then follow the prompts, or you can go to our cash app, dollar sign, Berean4555. You can even mail it to us. Uh, Berean Seventh Day Adventist Church, 4555 Fairfield Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. May Yahweh bless you as you give to this ministry to keep us sharing this joy of God's love to others. Amen. Um, Brother Lawrence, if you can give us our benediction and pray for our author, we pray. You ready? Yes. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for the word tonight that builds our character and helps us to be what you want us to be righteous. We thank you for Jesus, our friend, who spoke these words years ago, but it, they are so apropos today for us. Thank you. Now be merciful unto us as we hide these words in our hearts that we may not sin against you. In the name of Jesus, bless us and keep us, our homes, our families, our loved ones, our friends, Please be merciful unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you, my friends, and we will see you this Sabbath. We are here at 10 o'clock for Sabbath school, and then our divine worship starts at 11 o'clock. We are not screaming or streaming the uh, Sabbath school yet. Uh, so if you are online, YouTube or Facebook, you can join us at 11 o'clock. Uh, share and invite somebody to join you, join us, and we look forward to having a great time this Sabbath. God bless you.